Hello and welcome. My name is Alex Popov and today I'm going to show you how to connect Microsoft Power BI to Apache Hive using Simba Hive ODBC driver. Let's start with some overview of what we're going to achieve today. So we're going to talk about some prerequisites, what you need to do if you want to follow with this demo. Uh, I'll show you how to set up Simba Hive ODBC driver on Windows, how to connect Microsoft Power BI to Hive using Simba Hive ODBC driver. We'll do a short demo of Power BI features and that's it. That's the plan for today. Prerequisites. So obviously we'll need access to Hadoop cluster and Hive server. Uh, in my case it's just running on my laptop so there's different ways of getting uh, Hadoop and Hive installed. You may use one of the many prepackaged virtual machines uh, or you can if you have access to a real cluster you can uh, connect to, to it as well. Um, also some people run <coughs> Hadoop and Hive on Amazon Web Services infrastructure. So you will need a Hive server name and port number. You will need to know which authentication scheme is configured and the credentials to log on to the server and you will need some data set loaded into Hadoop. Uh, with Hive Schema defined for it. You will obviously need uh, Microsoft Power BI Designer and Simba Hive ODBC Driver. So for the data set, if you want to follow, I'm using a popular MobiLens data set. There's, it comes in different sizes uh, available from, from this URL. Uh, we're using 20 million row data set, uh, which is just fine for this demo. You can download Microsoft Power BI Designer from the URL below. And Simba Hive ODBC driver is available from Simba uh, website. There is a 30-day free trial that you can you can download from this page. Uh, select your operating system. For, for, for this demo we will of course need Windows and you click Try Now to, to request the validation version. So you will be able to download the actual driver from here. And you will also receive a validation license in, in, in an email. One thing to keep in mind is that driver comes in two versions, 32 and 64-bit. And the version of the driver that you will install needs to match the version of Microsoft Power BI Designer. So if you use 32-bit Microsoft Power BI Designer, you also need to use 32-bit uh, ODBC driver. So in this case, I installed the driver into Simba folder. And then I created a subfolder for i86. And the license file that will, you will receive an email needs to go into the lib folder. So here's the license file, Simba Apache Hive ODBC driver. LAC and basically just needs to be in the same folder where the uh, driver DLL itself. At the moment, Microsoft Power BI Designer doesn't work with system DSNs. You need to create a um, connection string, which is not too difficult, and I'll show you how to do this. Um, so it may be helpful first to install the driver using ODBC administrator, even though you, you, you won't be able to uh, to use this DSN through Power BI Designer, it will allow you to verify your that you can connect through the driver and that all, all, all the options are set up correctly. Again, you need to start the version of the ODBC administrator that matches your driver architecture. So I have 32-bit driver, sorry, 32-bit designer. Uh, when you install the driver, it will actually will create a sample DSN for you. And by opening this DSN, you can fill out the information specific to your installation. So you will need the host name of your Hive server. You will need the port number that the server listens on. You may optionally provide the name of the uh, schema you're connecting to. And you also need to specify which type of the Hive server, which version of the Hive server you're using. Most recent 
installations or virtual machines will have Hive Server 2, uh, but you can also change it if you're using an older version of Hive. And the last step you need to set up what authentication mechanism is configured on your Hive server and provide required credentials. And the driver supports a wide range of authentication mechanisms. Uh, for this demo, we're just using username with no password. And as a last step, you can also click test to verify that you can connect to your driver and to the to the backend. So let's complete it successfully. We are ready to go. So to create the connection string, you will pretty much use the same options. The um, option names sometimes differ from how they appear in the driver configuration. So I would suggest you refer to the driver installation guide that comes with with the, with the driver. You will also need the driver name. So in this case, it's Simba Hive ODBC driver to refer to the driver in the, in the connection string. So let's start Microsoft Power BI Designer. All right and connect to our data source. The most popular ones are listed right here, most common ones. To access data sources accessible through ODBC, you need to click on the More button, which will bring up even larger list of drivers. So you have two options for ODBC connections. You can either load the whole tables with this option, or you can specify your query sets. So in this case, we'll just use ODBC tables. Designer prompts you for the connection string. I already prepared the connection string. Um, as you can see, the format is relatively simple to follow. Basically, it starts with the name of the driver you've seen in ODBC Administrator, followed by the host name, port number, schema, authentication mechanism, and Hive server type. So. The only thing you need to refer for the authentication mechanism, you need to refer to the driver installation guide where you can map the particular mechanism to uh, numeric code. So let's just copy this connection string and paste it into Power BI Designer. Okay. So we successfully established connection, and now we have a dialog where we can select which which tables we can uh, we want to import into Designer. So we will be working with the MovieLens data set. So if we just select four tables from that data set. You can also preview the tables in this view. So um, the schema is very simple. Um, basically, for the users, we have the user ID, gender, age, occupation, and the zip code. There's a similar table for movies, movie ID title, and the composite column containing array of genres. Um, there's a table with user occupations analysis and there's a table that joins um, users and movies using the ratings. So let's load this data set. I'm running it on a laptop so it's uh, going to take some time to load 20 million rows into the memory. There it goes. Oh, actually, it's a 1 million row data set in this case. All right. So the tables are loaded, and you see the list of fields on the left-hand side. So let's, um, we can start dragging and dropping them on the canvas and creating our report or dashboard. So let's spend some time just familiarizing ourselves with the data set and doing some cleanup. 
Okay, so as we see, the movie table contains the name of the movie, or the title of the movie, with the um, release year appended in the brackets. So that's probably not a very good idea. Let's split it out into a separate column so that we can use this column to, to do our analysis. It's relatively easy to do it with the Power BI Designer. We can select the column and use split column by delimiter tool. In this case, we'll use a custom delimiter type. We'll use the opening bracket. And just because the bracket can appear in the, in the movie title as well, we want to make sure that we only use the rightmost delimiter to do our splitting. All right, so you can see that column was split into um, sub-columns, one containing clean movie title and another containing the year the movie was released. So we just need to rename the columns and they will clean up. So we'll leave title as the name of the this column and we'll rename the next column into year. Now let's clean up the closing bracket as well. So we can do it by replace value function. And again, we're just looking at the closing square bracket, replacing with the bank blank character. Done. All right. We would probably also want to do something about the genres because the way the movie is categorized right now is probably not very convenient for our analysis. We'd like to have it in the uh, in a single column. So again, we can use our split column by function. In this case, we'll split it by commas, and we'll use at each occurrence of the delimiter option. Okay. So we see that instead of one column, we have five columns. That's obviously the maximum number of categories currently assigned to any movie. And it just created it, created uh, indexes to separate them. A little bit more cleanup. We need to clean up opening and closing brackets. So let's just select all these columns and do replace value, replace opening. And the same for the closing bracket. Done. Again, for the for the analysis, we probably want to convert the wide format into long format, so that we we'll, we can link movie ID to collection of uh, categories or genres that movie belongs to. But we don't want to do it in the same table. Why don't we split this table into a separate one and create a relation? So we'll duplicate the table. And let's rename it. We'll call it genres. We don't need to repeat the title and the year because we can link on the movie ID field. So we'll just remove these columns. And with these columns, what we want to do instead of having the wide format, we want to repeat the movie ID and list all available categories for that movie. This actually turns out to be a very simple task in Power BI Designer. Um, and this function is called unpivot. It's found under transform tab, and we can unpivot the columns. And there you have it. So you can see that movie ID 1, instead of having one line with three different columns, we have all the values in one column. So it's really easy to do the joint in analysis. Really, we don't need to track of that attribute, so we can delete this column altogether. All right. 
back to our original movies table, we can now safely remove the genres from it because now it exists in a separate column, in a separate table. Done. Another thing that Microsoft Power BI does for you is it detects, automatically tries to detect the relationship between the table and create those relations. It does by matching column titles. So if two columns have the same identifier in two different tables, Microsoft Power BI Designer will, will create the relation between those tables. So let's review those. So we'll switch to Report tab. And at this time, I will refresh the tables that we modified. And let's click at Manage Relationships to see how table relate. So we can see that genres are linked to movies on the Movie ID column, which is correct. Ratings are linked to movies on Movie ID. And ratings linked to users on User ID. This is great. The only thing that is missing, for some reason, is that users are not linked to occupations table. So let's close it for now and go back to our tables to review why we did the case. So users are identified by user ID, and occupations are defined by occupation ID. Ah, uh, here's why. So the occupation code actually has a column called occupation, so it doesn't match the, the key column in occupation table. So we can fix it by renaming it to occupation ID. All right. And occupation ID here. Okay. So now if we'll switch back it refreshes definitions of the table that we just renamed. Let's look at the relationship. So still only those three. But we can either manually define a relationship, but in this case, because the columns match, we should be able just to click Auto Detect. And Power BI Designer finds the new relationship. All right. So now users are also linked to occupations and occupation ID. So at this point, we're ready to work with our data. Our columns, our tables and columns are cleaned. Um, relationship, relationships between the tables are defined. The only thing we can probably do is rename the tables to make them a little shorter. But this is not important. So let's see, for example, how our users are distributed by age. And we can do it just by dropping the age column onto the canvas. That's certainly not what we're, what we're expecting to see. Let's find why. Well, because it tries to, um, it tries to summarize the age. So we get the total age of all our users, which is probably not what we want to See, in this case, we can easily fix that by changing age to, to an axis of the graph, just dragging it into the axis. But we need to define that we're going to do the value, as use as the value for the graph. And we can just do the count of user IDs. That will give us the distribution. So drop the user ID in, in the... Um, in the value column, and here we have our distribution. We can change how the value is calculated, and currently it adds the user ID, which is not correct, as the user IDs are actually um, increasing number, so instead we should use count. There we go. It's more like so it's interesting. Now we can see that the user is user age is actually not reported as a continuous variable or discrete variable. It's actually mapped to the ranges. So in this case, 
The first column indicates anyone younger than 18 years old. The second column indicates anyone between 18 and 25 years old, and so so forth. Okay, so let's do another example. So let's build the distribution of users by occupation. So we'll grab the occupation, which should contain the occupation name. Uh, it tries to use occupation ID as the value, which is incorrect. Let's do a user count instead, as we did with the age. All right. Now we have distribution by occupation, and let's sort it. Um, you need to right-click on your graph, so let's sort by count of user IDs, and we'll just sort it in reverse order. Okay, so we see that the most uh, most frequent reviewer is the college grad student, um, followed by other or not specified executive managerial, and so forth, until we hit the farmers that are rarely leave reviews in this database. The two graphs now are linked. So if we select any, any uh, value, we'll adjust the second graph accordingly. So <clears throat> by clicking on the age group 18 to 25, uh, or 85 to 35 in this case, we can see what proportion of all users, how they're distributed across occupations. Clicking on um, 18 to 25, we, as, as expected, we see a large proportion of college grad students, um, and 56 and older are primarily retired. So that's a powerful feature for a very quick ad hoc analysis of data and help, helps you understand the data you, you're working with. Next, I want to talk about one important feature of Simbo Hive ODBC driver called query translation. The native query language supported by Hive is HiveQL. For very simple queries, HiveQL is a subset of SQL 92, which is standard flavor of SQL used in ODBC applications. However, for most applications, the syntax is different enough that most applications do not work with native HiveQL. So our connector bridges the differences between SQL 92 and HiveQL by translating equivalent by translating standard SQL 92 queries in, into equivalent HiveQL queries. SQL Connector performs syntactical and structural transformations. For example, it takes care of differences in how coded identifiers are treated. It supports table aliases that are not supported by HiveQL. It translates the syntax for join, inner join, and cross join. And also handles differences in how the limit to the um, size of a record set is handled. So, so far we used complete tables as they are defined in HiveQL, in, in, in Hive. For most applications, that probably not a good, uh, not a very good choice because tables may be large, they may be um, the only a subset of columns or a subset of rows needs to be selected and maybe some, some joints needs to be made um, before data is loaded into Power BI. Again, for most queries, we can rely on driver's query translation mechanism and write our queries in a familiar SQL 92 uh, flavor. But sometimes we need to take advantage of HiveQL extensions. A good example would be our movie table, which contains a composite column with an array of uh, genres, categories of, of the movie. Standard SQL does not support uh, composite columns, so we can't query on a particular element of the array. And um, in the following demonstration, I want to show how we can enable native query support in Simba Hive ODBC driver. 
This works very similar to what we've done so far, but we need to add a special key to, the, to our connection string, which enables native query uh, support. So I'll copy our connection string. And I will add the following key, use native query equals one to be able to send an, um, HiveQL queries unmodified to, um, to the backend. So instead of loading queries, instead of loading tables, I'll use ODBC query instead. I'm specifying connection string. I'm adding use native query equals one. And just to test it, I'll try to do a simple select from movies um, table, and I'll use HiveQL syntax for limiting the number of rows. So I'll say limit five. Let's see if that will work. If we would not add this key, this query would fail because it's not a standard SQL 92 query. But as you can see, it works in the passful mode or in the native query mode. So if you remember, <clears throat> for this table, we needed to do some cleanup and split the genres and individual columns. So we can use HiveQL query to accomplish exactly that. Because Hive query gives us, uh, give us access to uh, elements of the composite arrays. So we can leverage it in this case. So we can modify the existing query. So we'll actually specify the columns. Title. And we'll use the array element access syntax supported by HiveQL like this. So we'll test that first with a small subset. And we made an error somewhere. Movie ID, yes. Misspelled the column. Okay, it works. You see how it split the composite column into individual subcolumns. The only thing it uses default column names matching the Category, so we can also rename the these columns. I'll just call it. It's probably not important in this case, but G4. G5. Now we can bring all the records this time. So there you have it. This is an example how you can leverage the native Hive QL abilities um, to extract the data.